Snot and Fluff, a space adventure. On a distant planet, in a small cottage, lived two friends, the ever-sniffing Snot and his hairy buddy, Fluff. Snot dreamt of distant journeys and spent long hours browsing space maps and travel books. Fluff's hobby was baking cookies. He kept testing new recipes and the oven in the little cottage was hot all day long. Snot was all into distant space journeys and not impressed by Fluff's cookies. I wonder what they eat on other planets, he said. Tomorrow I will seek the advice of the sleepy sages. Maybe they will tell me how to experience a space adventure, he decided. Fluff was so busy planning his next baking experiments that he did not seem to be listening to his friend. Early in the morning, Snot set out on his mount to the mountains to visit the sleepy sages. They told him that if you want to travel far, grab a lasso and catch a comet, a superstar. Who would have thought that catching a comet with a lasso is so difficult, huffed Snot. He was so excited that he forgot to leave a note for Fluff to inform his friend of the journey. He only remembered when he was sitting on the comet, galloping towards the clouds. Meanwhile, in their little cottage, after a good night's sleep, Fluff started the new day preparing breakfast. Fluff looked out of the window and saw Snot departing on his comet. He was so shocked that he dropped the tray with cookies. But how come? Where is he going? Without breakfast? Without dessert? Without me? Thoughts kept racing through his head and tears soon gushed from his eyes. Sitting on the comet, Snot was traveling through the galaxy. At last, his dream was coming true. Space adventure, here I come. Lonely, Fluff could not recover after losing his friend. He neglected his duties and kept devouring cookies. Piles of dirty dishes stood all around the house. Finally, Fluff decided to tidy the cottage. This is when he came across Snot's guide to galactic spaceships. Maybe I could build a space rocket and find Snot, wondered Fluff. Fluff quickly got down to building the rocket. He was not sure how to connect the parts, so he used sticky custard to glue them together. Although he had never done it before, he decided to stick to it. Meanwhile, Snot discovered an unknown planet. The comet started to descend, and Snot saw the beautiful blue surface of a water planet with one tiny island in the middle. Both he and the comet were tired after a long flight, so Snot commanded, Touchdown! However, the tiny island turned out to be the Pirate's Bay. Fortunately, the inhabitants were so hospitable that they greeted Snot as if he were a major captain. With great relief, Snot jumped into the tub and ordered a shark cocktail. In the meantime, Fluff was testing his rocket. The cream-powered engine he had designed was doing fine. Before he started on his journey, he hugged his cat. Watch the house, kitty, so that nobody steals cookies from the pantry, he asked. Although the cat seemed to have a different plan. Fluff poured top quality cream into the tank. Fluff started the engine and the rocket launched with a huge force. After a while, the cottage and the whole planet disappeared into the distance. The search for Snot started. 
Meanwhile, the leader of the pirates, Lolo the fisherman, asked Snod for help. Some time ago I lost an important key. Please use our baby scaff and help me find it. If you manage, you'll receive an ample reward. Snot did not hesitate. Of course I will help you. Besides, I've never been so deep underwater, he replied. Snot started the search for the key in the sea. Underwater, there were many colorful creatures. Snot regretted that Fluff was not there to see them. Suddenly, the cream fuel gauge in Fluff's rocket showed zero. The cream was running low in the tank, and on the Milky Way, only milk and sour milk could be found. Cat! We need to land! Emergency! shouted Fluff. As if on cue, a cloud appeared in their way. Every now and then, a lightning bolt struck it frantically. There must be a planet underneath. Fluff landed safely on an electric planet hidden in the clouds. One of the inhabitants, who introduced himself as Mr. Nosy, offered Fluff help. After a while, both of them were sitting in electric cabs and heading for a place where Fluff could get new rocket fuel. Snot managed to find the key and the pirates gave him two presents in return. A magical stick and a dog seal. Do you eat desserts on your planet? asked Snot, devouring the pirate supper. Of course we do. We are having delicious sticks with sea salt for dessert, replied the pirates. Snot suddenly became very sad. He remembered the sweet cookies baked by his friend. When the party was over, Snot said goodnight and went for a walk around the island. At night, Snot reached the most beautiful hill he had ever seen. The night is light thanks to the big furry moon hanging above the island. Snot remembered the magical stick. He tapped it gently on the ground and the moon woke up. Fluff and Mr. Nosy took a long flight inside the planet. Finally, they reached the electric cave. We're almost there, Mr. Nosy assured him. Somewhere inside there is a tap. There you can pour some fuel for your rocket. He warned Fluff that the tap was guarded by an electric dog, which must be fed before you turn the tap. He also advised Fluff to light a candle if the whisker snake gets mad. Fluff carefully wrote everything down on the back of his map, just in case. Fluff climbed the steps and saw a large blue jar under the tap. On the left side of the tap, the anxious electric dog kept staring at the intruder, and on the right, there was the whisker snake, bristling up his whiskers. Meanwhile, Snot was totally involved in the story the moon was telling him, about a collection of treasures found in distant places in space. The moon kept all the treasures inside, but his favorite ones were CDs with music. He told Snot that he used to attend a music school on the Bear Planet, and he borrowed the pipe organ, which he later mislaid. Now he was ashamed to go back without it. I will gladly help you find the lost instrument. I've never been to the moon, let alone inside, replied Snot with a laugh, and in the next moment, the moon swallowed him. It is rather messy on the moon's tongue, observed Snot. He noticed it was exactly like Fluff's kitchen. Nevertheless, he started looking for the lost pipe organ. Fluff filled the tanks with the new electric fuel, and before he set out, he asked Mr. Nosy, Maybe I could offer you a lift in exchange for what you did for me. Mr. Nosy beamed and asked Fluff to take him to a planet called Herbaland. 
Fluff is happy. Although he has his cat, he started to feel lonely. He took his guest and the cat inside the rocket, and they set out towards Herbaland. Plants on Herbaland have excellent conditions and reach gigantic sizes. Fluff was so interested by this that he failed to notice a threatening danger. Behind his back lurked a ship full of broccoli bandits. Having found the pipe organ, Snot and Dog Seal were sneezed out by the moon towards the bare planet so that they could return the borrowed instrument. Thank you, and please say sorry to the bears for me. I can't leave this place now. Without me, the night would be so black that even the bravest pirates would hide in fear. Good luck, shouted the moon from the distance. Snot returned the pipe organ and the grateful inhabitants of the bear planet arranged a trip for him in return. This is when Snot had the opportunity to see all the animal species living there. Sadly, again, he felt he was missing Fluff. A huge spherical spaceship with Fluff on board was speeding through the galaxy. The green eyes of the spaceship were blinking ominously. Once in a few years, broccoli bandits appeared in various regions of space to kidnap random passers-by. However, nobody knows why. None of the kidnapped passengers ever returned home, except, well, maybe except for the snail from the slug planet. Unfortunately, snails like to keep quiet, and when they do talk, they speak so slowly that one word can take a whole day. Therefore, the secret of the Broccoli Bandits is now as safe as houses. Fluff woke up, tied up in a small cell. A smell of broccoli was in the air, and strange voices could be heard all around. Would this be the end of his journey? After a whole day on Bear Planet, Snot felt tired and asked his hosts to let him stay overnight. All of them wanted to give him the best party possible. So they played rock, paper, scissors and decided that their guest would stay in a capsule of the spaceship. <coughs> Yawned Snot and fell asleep immediately after his head touched the pillow. Snot had a really weird dream. He dreamt of Fluff, who looked like a piece of broccoli, and was calling for help. A cookie cat with candy eyes, a strange bee, and a miserable cloud, which seemed to be the cause of the trouble. Broccoli bandits decided to trade Fluff for caster sugar. The exchange would take place on the Candinex planet, ruled by the Sad Crescent King. A long time ago, when he was out hunting, his left horn caught on a branch and broke off. Nobody could paste it back. What is more, the king used to punish any failed attempt with jail. So soon, there was nobody left to bake confectionery. So, willy-nilly, Fluff had to become a cook in the king's court. The court physician of the king tried to put back the broken horn again in vain. Queen Jelly and Princess Candy haven't smiled in a long time. Meanwhile, broccoli bandits were approaching the king's castle. Snot, terrified with his dream, immediately borrowed a spaceship and set out to help Fluff. What a nightmare! Fluff needs my help! Snot quickly realized that he dreamt of the Candinex planet. He had read a lot about it, so he knew he should take the milk chocolate way. On its way, the spaceship passed a group of lollipop meteorites and barely escaped a collision with a wafer star. On the Candinex planet, 
Fluff was sadly stirring maple syrup. He couldn't believe he was kidnapped and forced to produce sweets non-stop. What is more, his boss, Mr. Raisin, was not the nicest either. Having landed on the Candinex planet, Snot was looking for his friend. It took him a long time, but Fluff was nowhere to be found. At night, Snot crept to the royal castle. On the walls, he noticed sweet portraits of the royal family. Fluff would like that, he thought, and continued the search. Meanwhile, Fluff remembered that he knew a recipe for a gooey, gluey custard. He decided he would try and repair the king's horn. When night fell, he crept into the royal chamber to fulfill his plan. The next day, the king stood in front of the mirror and could not believe his eyes. Holy mackerel! My broken horn is here again! The king decided to reward Fluff and held a ball for him. Invitations were immediately sent out in beautifully decorated envelopes. Snot also received an invitation to the royal ball. He was sitting on a small rocky island in the jelly pond and decided he would go and see who the cook mentioned on the invitation is. Hip hip hooray! Everybody at the ball was cheering, applauding and throwing Fluff up in the air. Princess Candy appeared and squeezed his little paw. Fluff is really proud that his gooey gluey custard did the job and now everybody could smile and be happy again. If only Snot were here. Snot passed the happy and laughing town with his head bent down low. He realized that he may never see Fluff again. Suddenly, he noticed familiar furry paws. He was so happy, he felt teased. <laughs>